friends welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is Amy and I live in Arizona and I've been cross stitching for probably close to two years now um, it's a new year welcome 2021 and happy new year to all of you I'm hoping that we have a much better year this year and um, it's weird because I, I feel a little nervous and and you know, frightened about this year. And I don't think I've ever felt that way before. It's kind of sad. So I'm trying to hold on to the, my hope and my faith that this year is going to be better. And I have all of you and your support and that means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you. And, um, just want to truly wish you a happy new year. I have a few things to show you. Um, I, it's going to be kind of choppy because I didn't really create like a lineup. And so bear with me. <laughs> um, I don't know like which is the best way to start. Um, this is my first New Year's with on Floss Tube, And so I don't really have a routine or um, a plan. But I rarely have a plan. I usually just go with it. <laughs> so let's get started. I think what I want to do first is kind of wrap up 2020 and, um, it won't be too long. Just, um, so bear with me, but, um, I wanted to start with, I think I want to start with a couple of comments. Um, or one comment first. Okay, so Rustic Prim Stitcher said she wanted to use a tracker for sewing and cross stitch projects. And I think that's a great thing. You know, I think journaling and um, planners or whatever is a great way of preserving history. And someday someone might be looking at your cross stitching and have a bunch of questions. And not that the planner or, or journal is going to answer all those questions, but surely it will, will be a little bit of fun insight for them. And so um, I started taking, keeping a planner. I started keeping a cross stitch journal in 2020. And I picked up this one from the Fat Quarter Shop. A Book of Days 2021 is really popular and it's beautiful. And I mean, whatever way you go. I started this way before I knew about the Book of Days. So um, I'm kind of sticking with it. I like how small it is. Um, and when you first open it up, you know, it has this book belongs to, and then it has a place for you to write all your projects down. Look at all those projects. <laughs> and then on each page, you know, you put your pattern, um, name, designer, start and dates, which you stitched on, your stitch count, your stitch size, your floss, your time tracker, which I don't count stitches, but I'll put down like on the 23rd, I did 30 minutes or two hours or whatever. And then at the end, I calculate all the hours for that project. So it's a handy reference. And then I put any notes I have about the project, what I did, if I made changes, that sort of thing. And um, this book holds 50 projects. I put a sticker on the front because I have 2021 now and I don't want to be confused because I went back and forth, like I have a few pages left in here and I thought, do I just start 2021 in here and then keep going or do I start a new book? And I was torn because I don't like to be wasteful. So, um, I think I have only, uh, let me see. I have seven pages that are empty in here. So I, debated starting 2020 in here and I didn't. So I don't know if I'm going to regret that later. Um, I don't know, but so I put stickers on here. Um, if you haven't watched hello from Liz Matthews, uh, you need to check her out. I love her videos. I love her designs. Um, she's a designer and she also does floss tube videos and she, um, showed these sticker books and she's always like, she works really hard and I really appreciate that to give, new ideas and creative things and fun things you can do. And I just love Liz and her um, energy. Anyway, she showed, I'll show a little bit of my haul. She showed um, these sticker books and she showed a second one just recently. Where did I put it? This is the second one she just showed. 
It's called the Botanist Sticker Book, and it has all flowers and fun, tons and tons of stickers, all different types. So I bought this on Amazon. I bought the other one she showed, which was called um, Antiquarium. Aquarian? Let me show you that one. This one has over a thousand stickers. So I had I bought both of them because <laughs> I love them. Because you could they're very. This one's really kind of. Some of them are weird and strange, and I probably will never use them. But some of them are really fun, and I put them on my cards and on my notes and in my and I put them just wherever. Um, let me show they're kind of some of them are old fashioned looking. Um, some of them are, like I said, really weird. Let me see if I can find a fun page. Anyway, I'm sure you've all probably seen this book by now. I think Brenda and Laura have gotten it now and or have had it for a while, have multiple books, but it's just a fun thing. So I bought that book. So I put on the front a sticker from that book to distinguish between the two, and then I wrote the Sharpie the year. 2021 I wrote that on the sticker so I can remember which book is which and it's a little more fun so um I started a new book for 2021 and what I decided to do is I have a few projects in here I haven't completed yet so this book isn't going away because I'm still going to track those projects in this book um but I anything new I start will go in this book and so for 2020, I had um, a goal to stitch 20 projects in 2020, and I stitched um, 43 projects. Isn't that awesome? What Full disclosure, one of them I started in 2019, but I finished it in 2020, so I'm counting it. Um, so I had 42 starts for 2020, and I finished 36 of them. So I'm only carrying over seven whips into the new year, which is a lot, but I, cause I'm new. So that feels very overwhelming. I know for some of you season stitchers, that's nothing. And I can see how that can happen. No guilt here coming from me. Um, because new projects come out and you know, you want to stitch what makes you happy and what you're in the mood for. It's not supposed to be a chore. So I get it. So anyway, I'm carrying over seven projects into 2020. However, I'm uh, 2021, excuse me. However, I'm still going to use the 2020 book to record my time and everything. And so, um, that's what I do for record keeping. And in this, the front section, the first two pages, I list the, the, the name of the designer. And when I'm done, I put a little star and I put how many hours next to it to complete. It's like, an, it's like a quick reference. And, um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. So then that brings me to um, back to Rustic Prim Stitcher's uh, comment. She said she wanted to choose a tracker for sewing and cross stitch projects. So I had a fun idea for this, um, and you can incorporate this idea into whatever planner you use, whatever calendar you use, whether it's Book of Days or whatever. Is for Christmas I I bought myself a present. Let me see where is it? Oh, here it is. I bought, okay, so for Christmas, I bought myself a in, in stack, in stack, I don't know, little Insta mini Polaroid picture. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to start doing and I'm going to do is for uh, all my 2020 projects as well, is I'm going to take a picture of my project when I'm finished. It's a little Polaroid picture that pops up. Uh, super cute. Let me show you what it looks like. So I did a couple so far, but not all the, all of them. So let me show you what um, I'm going to do. Okay. So for example, my prized flower urn pin keep by Stacy Nash. Um, I took a picture of it, a little Polaroid, and I put it right, I taped it right onto the page because if my grandkids or my great grandkids want to are looking through this, they're not going to know what that is. They're not going to see the chart. They're not going to know. So this little picture is going to help them for as long as it lasts. I mean, we know it's not going to last through the end of time, but um, it will give them a reference to the project, um, what it looks like. Let me show you another one. 
Um, where did it go? I haven't done all of them yet, so. Um, and then uh, for Blackbird casting a spell, I put um, the picture here and I taped it. And it's covering some information, but with the tape on the top, you can just lift it up and you can still read everything on there. Um, and so I'm gonna try to do the pictures vertically, I decided, because this little space right here for the floss is like the perfect size for that Polaroid picture. I mean, it's like just perfect. So what I'll do is if I make any floss changes, I'm gonna write them really small up here in this margin, and then I'm gonna put the picture here. And if I absolutely need space, I'll, I'll write in that spot and then, you know, cover it. But I'm trying not to, I'm gonna try not to. Um, so for like Snow Village, I put the Polaroid right here. This one's kind of dark. Um, I think I might retake it. Um, I thought I had one more in here, but now I don't see it. I took another picture. You get the idea. So that's a fun idea you can do if you would like. Um, and I like that fact that it's an instant Polaroid picture because you take it with your phone, you have to, you know, send it online or go print it and then come back. And by the time all that happens, you've probably moved on. At least I do. I am i don't have time. I'm not that organized. <laughs> so I love that the little Insta Polaroid Mini is um, just boom. You take it, it's done, it's there. And if I have a, a project that has multiple segments, like, um, okay, so let's talk about that. I count every pattern as a project. So for example, my Snow Village, that's 11 patterns. I had to buy 11 patterns to, to stitch that all together. So that's not one project, that's 11 projects. If it's a pattern, it's its own pattern, it is its own project, it gets its own page, and I log it. So if I have um, multiple patterns, like I had those 11 um, for Snow Village, and for example, like this prize pig um, flower pin keep, earn pin keep, it has it had two charts that I used to make it. I had the cover and then had another chart inside. So I put on here on the notes, two parts, see also project number nine. Or I'm on the Snow Village, I put 11 part series you know, see other pages. So people know, like, they don't think, oh, Snow Village only took her 11 hours. No, that was one chart of 11. You know what I mean? So I make sure I note that in my book so I can keep track and say, oh, that was a multiple chart project. Like Halloween Rules, that's a lot of different charts. So um, I note that um, on there in the book also so people know what, what it is. Um, like Casting a Spell, was actually three different charts that all put together. So I put up here, you know, on number 28, I put second of three, two of three segments. Um, so you know, oh, one of three segments. So that way they know. Okay, so that's my little uh, tip for how I organize my whips and finishes and track them. And I've got my 2021 book already started. And guess, I have a new start. I have project number one for 2021. I have started a pattern that I was totally off my radar. I didn't even know about it. Um, I was filling an order at the attic and stumbled upon it and bought it that day. Kitted it up and brought it home and um, I started it. So. Maybe I'll show that to you now since we're talking about it. Um, my new start for 2021 is called Accept Grandmas by Lindy Stitches. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I saw this pattern and I loved it. A little bit of crinkling here, sorry. It is so fun. I love how it's finished. I'm gonna find myself an eight by 10 oval frame Look at the colors on that. It says, there's no place like home except grandma's. I died. This made me so happy when I saw it because my whole life, anytime I went into anyone's home who was a grandma, 
they had a sign similar to this verbiage about, you know, grandma's the best, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a rite of passage, right? I saw this and died. I loved it. And I know that typically probably most of those um, sayings or things were probably bought by the daughter and given to the mom or whatever. But my daughter doesn't cross stitch, so I'm making my own. <laughs> anyway, I'm using the Call Four Colors. Um, it is really cute. I'm going to find an 8x10 oval frame. And if it's not the color I want, I'm going to paint it with um, some chalk paint to fit my sewing room colors. So I think that's my plan. But if I don't paint my sewing room colors, I am going to paint it a fun color like this because I, I want it to really just pop out and be fun. Okay. So, um, I am stitching on, let me tell you here. I'm stitching on 32 count Belfast antique white. And, um, I stitched three hours so far on it and I have, um, I'm using all the call for colors. So here is my progress. Sorry, it's very wrinkly. Isn't that so fun? It's so fun. And stitching on 32 count is like fun. It's no thought. You just woo, woo, woo. I stitch in hand. I don't have a hoop, so I just stay on top of the fabric and it's like almost mindless. You don't have to do hardly any thinking. I'm not having to kill myself looking for the threads. It's so much fun. It's very relaxing, a very relaxing stitch. And so, um, I tried, I, I tried looking at other fabrics. I pulled all the fabric out of my stash and I laid the floss on all the different fabrics I have. And there are, so I have some beautiful fabrics, but the white, it's made the colors pop and I wanted it to kind of be old school in that sense that it's like on white fabric linen but um I like the colors and the framing is going to make it you know fun and whimsical so that's my start for this year I started on New Year's Day and I stitched for three hours so far and it's really fun okay so that's one down um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of my finishes. Um, I had mentioned I had finished um, 36 projects for 2020 and uh, of course a lot of them were smalls and uh, a lot of them were freebies for the pandemic. I stitched a lot of the, um, you know, choose happy, be well, uh, stay home and stitch. Let's stay home, be well, so, etc. I stitched a lot of those during the pandemic when we were on lockdown. And so that was, uh, you know, added to my huge finish for this year. Um, I also stitched um, this one, Memorial Day by Hands on Design. I think that's who it is. I should probably get my book out. I don't want to misspeak, which I, I know I do. I'm my brain scatterbrained, so you guys probably laugh at me all the time. Like I'm thinking one thing and my mouth says something else. Okay, so this is, yeah, Memorial Day by Hands on Design. And I finished it on this old um, wood pick, picket wood fence. And I love that finish. I think it's so fun. It's like, you know, the flags and the ribbon ruffle are blowing in the wind on the, hanging on the clothesline out in the backyard. That's my, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Did you hang up clothes? I, or do you still? I remember we lived in Arizona growing up and our summers are so hot and we would go hang the laundry out and it would literally be dry, dry in like five minutes. Um, but because of the moisture, it always attract, um, hornets to the clothesline and we would hate to go hang up clothes because there would be hornets um, and bees that would come buzzing around us by the wet clothes. And then the towels were always so crunchy. Like they were like a board, <laughs> rough and like a board. 
Oh my gosh, so funny. But yeah, we would hang up our clothes and for a lot of years, we never had a dryer, a lot of years. And um, to this day, because, okay, so you might not know this about me, I'm six foot one. I'm very tall and um, clothes, if they fit me, a lot of times after you wash and dry them, won't fit anymore because they're ma cheaply made. So I don't dry a lot of my clothes to this day and I wish I had a clothesline. <laughs> so you'll see like a laundry day, I don't want anybody coming over to my house because I have t-shirts and things draped over chairs and a drying rack and, and outside over chairs. Um, it's kind of embarrassing. I don't know why I shared that. But anyway, it's truth. It's life, right? So that's that piece. Here's another free piece I did. This is by Teresa Kogut. Be calm, stay home, be well, and stitch on. And I, because of stay home, I finished it on a door. I got it at Target. And I thought that was a really cute, fun finish. So that was one of my finishes for this year. Um, I also stitched um, Suffrage Act. And this is by Little House Needleworks. And um, I'm not gonna show you all my finishes, I'm just showing you a few. I love how this one turned out, so pretty. And um, I love patriotic stitching, I love the holiday. So that was another one of my finishes. Um, of course, whoa! Something fell. Of course, uh, I have to show you my Blackbird Designs finish. I stitched it all as one piece, casting a spell, and um, this I love. Um, I was not loving the frame so much, and I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a really nice, fun row for twine, and I'm going to glue it around this crack. And then I think it will finish it off, and I'll like it better. So that's my plan for that one. Here's that pin flower, uh, what's it called? Earn pin keep, price pig sewing book, and flower earn pin keep. So this is uh, one of the ones I did. And like I said, because it was two charts, um, this counts as two projects. Because this is a, this was its own chart, and then this flower was its own chart. And I collect by Brenda Gervais. This hangs it here in my sewing stitching room on the wall and that's another little fun finish and then the last one i'm going to show you from this past year from 2020 is the grand finale which is my snow village and i'm sure it's got probably horrible glare because i didn't pay for the museum glass i just it's fine anyway um love it love it so much and i have this one professionally framed by Sandy from the attic and she did a fabulous job. Okay, moving along. Um, I have seven whips that I'm carrying over into 2021, 2021. That's going to be hard to get in the habit of saying that. It's so weird. It's like, it's here already. I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So I have seven whips. I'm going to carry over into the new year. And um, the first one I'm going to show you is um, one that I've been stitching on. I just started not too long ago, and it's uh, Early Christmas Morning by Blackbird Designs. This cute little pin cushion. It says Merry Christmas around the band. And I worked on it some more this week. So I got some more progress to show you. I did notice a big boo-boo, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to leave it. I stitched um, all the way down here, the year, and I debated 2020 because I started it in 2020, but I'm not going to finish it. Obviously, I didn't finish it in 2020, so I went ahead and put 2021. Um, and then I finished all this. I finished the snowflakes. I changed to white. This um, little flower thing here. The bow. All that I did this week. Turned out really 
cute. I love it so much. It's on Fox and Rabbit, up in the attic, 36 count. And it's one thread over two. And I, I really like 32 count with two threads. It's so, so easy. It's just easy, that's all. 36, I, I think I must need better lighting maybe. Maybe that's it. I think my lighting isn't good enough. Um, it's like a little slower, go slower because I have to kind of really kind of look to make sure I don't miss uh, a thread. All right. Um, the next whip I'm going to take into this year is from Friend Stitch. I I attended the online um, online retreat and I finished this ornament and I finished the little the little cardinal bird, but I haven't finished this tree. So I have a, a little um, stitch I need to do. Shouldn't take too long. I am planning on finishing it because I want to have this set all together. Um, it was fully kitted and I haven't done anything on it since last time I showed you. It's kind of boring just doing all the leaves. It's just all green leaves. But I know it's going to be really adorable when I finish. So I, I will do it. I just have to force myself. All right, let's talk about coming to America. My Mayflower is still out there circling. <laughs> you guys, uh, it's, it's not, I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. I haven't stitched on it since the last time I showed you. It's on 40 count, which is I think part of the problem. Um, so, what I'm thinking is I might put it away, like put it away, put it away. I, I never w really want to do that, but I, seeing it in my bin causes me to feel sad and frustrated at myself and it, it's like nagging. <laughs> so I'm thinking of putting all the stuff, putting this away in my file cabinet here until I just feel it, feel the urge. I even thought about giving it away. So that's kind of where I'm at. I am not going to give it away. I know I would love to have it stitched. I just don't think I'm going to do it anytime soon. And so I'm going to file it. So it won't be completely out of sight, but it might be one of those long-term whips. Okay. That was unpleasant tree of today. Let's move along. Okay. Um, this I'm sure I'll stitch again once we get closer to Halloween. It's Halloween Revelry, and that's as far as I got for 2020. And that's going to be um, a sure whip come closer to Halloween in 2021. Um, and I'm choosing my own colors for that. And the fabric, <clears throat> the linen I'm using is... Just an even weave, 28 count uh, blue even weave. Okay. Um, I have my summer school project. We are the sampler makers. It's not uh, has not been released yet by the Scarlet House, but um, I need to get that done here soon. And that's on 36 count, Big Style Works Mocha. And that's from my summer school I went to at the attic. That was a fun thing for 2020 that I didn't think I was going to get to do. Uh, Lizzie K, Halloween Rules. I'm stitching on just some 28 count that I writ dyed with two different brown colors. And it's a really fun stitch. I'm using all my own colors uh, for my stash. And I have this much done. And I will start working on that. Probably not close to Halloween. Probably this summer. Because I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try to get it done for Halloween. So we'll see. I'm not sure when I'm going to bring this back into my rotation. But it's not. It will be brought back into my rotation for this year. For sure. 
And then my last whip I'm going to show you is Dracula's Confession by Lindy, Sti by Lindy Stitches. And I'm doing the vertical one on top. I love this um, pattern. I'm stitching on 36 count Seraphim Dead Sea Scroll. This, fat, this linen is beautiful. It has great modeling on it and it has um, like greens and yellows and um, it's just really pretty fabric. It goes like this. Camera tends to blow out the colors, but um, that's all I have finished. Um, this will be a stitch for this year. I will bring this back out. So, um, as far as okay, so let's talk about what's on my radar. I, you saw my new start on for New Year's Day. And I have a couple of projects. I have a lot of things I, I think I want to stitch, but I don't want to, I'm not going to commit to anything. Not going to happen. I just, not that I stitch what I feel like stitching when I feel like stitching it. I have very limited time to stitch. And so when I do get to stitch, I want to be something that I am thoroughly enjoying. Um, I did have some time on that snow village. It was such a big project and all that white snow. Oh my gosh. Where I just was like, wanted to give up. I had like three little scenes left and I wanted to put it away for forever. Um, I didn't stitch on it. I think for like a, maybe a month or so. And then I did still love the designs and I was able to kind of find a passion for it again and push through and get it done. And so that was wonderful. Um, I learned a lot from that and I learned that anything with a lot of white stitching, beware. <laughs> but okay, so these things are on my radar for 2021. Doesn't mean I'm going to for sure do it, but I, good chances of me stitching it. Of course, um, Winter Rose Manor by Blackbird Designs. If anything, I will do the small probably, but I really would like to stitch this for next Christmas, but um, this might be like a two year thing. This might be like 2021 to, into 2022 because, um, yeah, who knows? I haven't picked my fabric or my um, threads yet. I'm still going back and forth between two colors, so yeah, we're going to wait on that. Okay. Um, the other one that I want to stitch, uh, this 4th of July is patriotic mini bouquet and it's just a little teeny pin cushion by Jeanette Douglas designs. I want to stitch that, uh, for 4th of July. And then uh, this pattern, I love it. I just love it so much. I'm gonna start this for sure. Um, Blackbird Designs with my, it's called uh, Mother's Honor Dew. And it says, with my needle, I sew our names to give my mother her honor due. And then you put your mom's name and your name on the bottom. And, um, I want to stitch this really bad. So I have m the call for colors, but um, I'm changing the linen. Uh, this linen looks very yellow. It calls for, um, let's see. Uh, 20 count antique cotton by r, &R Reproductions. I don't have any r, &R fabric. So I went to my stash and I have a piece of, um, Weeks Dye Works. Let me see. Sorry, I didn't write it down yet. Weeks Dye Works Platinum. 36 count platinum. And the colors look really pretty on this fabric. It's like a light gray color. And the 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 silks really pop. Let me show you a few of them on it. And again, I don't know if my light is blowing it all out or not. Um, I hope it's not. 
blowing out the colors too much. It calls for raspberry parfait, rhubarb, um, not very many colors actually, like a green, um, avocado green and brandy. Anyway, I'll just show you a few of these, how pretty these look on here. So that's going to be a start real soon. I, um, I want to start that probably this month. So that'd be fun to stitch, uh, you know, with Mother's Day in a few months, have that done maybe for Mother's Day, maybe we'll see. Okay. So for the last one, this things that are on my radar to stitch this year is a biggie. Um, and a lot of you are probably stitching it this year or have stitched it already. And it's Little House Needleworks Kringles. I love this pattern. I want to stitch this pattern. I don't know if this will be like a two year stitch. I'm gonna, I was thinking of trying to do like one scene a month like I did for Snow Village. Um, but if I don't get it done by Christmas, I'm not going to sweat it. Um, I have the thread pack for that with all the call for colors. And I am going to stitch it on 28 count because it is such a big stitch. I don't want to do too high of a count. I don't want to feel frustrated. I don't want anything to discourage me from stitching on it. I want it to be fun. So does that mean it's going to be big? Yes. Do I care? No. <laughs> so I have this really pretty piece of touch of gray linen. Um, and I am going to, it's 28 count and I'm going to stitch it on this. And if it's the bigger, the better, because I think it's going to be really cute to see those scenes. I think my grandkids are going to grow up loving to look and stare at it. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited. It's a big count and it will be just a really easy, fun stitch. Okay. So that's my plan. And because it is on a bigger linen, I did get, um, extra floss cause I don't know uh, the, the pattern calls for 30 count. It's not that much of a difference. Probably one skein still enough, but I just didn't want to run out. So I got double. Okay. Um, we did have a giveaway. Um, so our giveaway, uh, our giveaway was the coffee first pattern. That I stitched for my sister for Christmas. Um, it's been laminated, so if that bothers you, sorry. I went through a little laminating phase where I didn't like the flimsy paper and I didn't want it to get all because you know how you bend it and open it and bend it and open it as you're stitching, and then the ink rubs off in the creases. Oh, it makes me crazy. So I laminated a bunch of them. Sorry, but I'm not laminating them anymore. Um, I just put them in a clear page protector when they're that flimsy paper to kind of help keep it, and I don't fold and open it so many times. But anyway, so I did the random, random comment picker and the winner is Barb Palmer. Barb Palmer, you're the winner. Contact me by email with your address or um, on Instagram and send me a private message and I will get this in the mail to you. Thank you so much for watching and being a subscriber. I really appreciate it. Um, and then also uh, I had one other comment I wanted to talk about. And it was from Nancy and she shared that she writes three cards a day starting in November. She said it's more enjoyable and brings the excitement of Christmas. And Nancy, I love that idea. That is a great idea. I have all my Christmas cards from 2020 that I didn't send out. So I'm ready to go for 2021. And so in November, I'm going to do that. I am going to send Christmas cards and I am going to do that idea, Nancy. I love it so much. I think it will bring the Christmas spirit in early in the holiday spirit early, um, working on cards throughout the month of November. And I think that's fabulous idea. And I think it will spread, um, love and kindness and happiness early to others. So, Yay. Love that comment, Nancy. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, if you um, are new to my channel, I have another playlist. It's called Ort Files. Uh, Ort stands for other random things. 
And as we all know, um, orts normally mean the little pieces of floss. So it's just like little pieces of fun videos, different themes, different thing, uh, some recipes, um, house decor, maybe crafts. I mean, it, it's just going to be a variety. So check out that other playlist if you haven't done so already. And um, this year I want to try to bring you um, fun things, new ideas. And so um, thanks for spending this year with me. And uh, I hope that you continue to join me in 2021. And um, we need to make it great. And I, um, one thing that I thought was a constant through all the comments was not a lot of uh, New Year's resolutions, but just, you know, people saying they want to be nice. They want to spend time with their loved ones. They want to spend time with friends, people that matter. And that's so important. And I always, you know, think that, you know, you want to be kind. And so, um, okay, that's it. I hope it wasn't too long this week and, um, take care, stay safe and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.